So are you tired of your old fashioned sealed lead acid battery always crapping out on you? Parking your camper in storage for a month and coming back and you can't even operate your tongue jack because the battery died that quick? Or you discharge your battery one time all the way and you come back, charge it up to find out it's kaput a day before you go on an off-grid camping trip? You're going to want to check this video out. What's happening everybody? Jason from JTV Life. Today we're going to be dropping in this Chins Lithium Iron Phosphate Smart Battery. Now this battery has a capacity of 100 amp hours which is about five times the capacity of the sealed lead acid battery that my camper came with a year ago. If you want to learn more about these lithium batteries be sure to check out my video where I unbox this battery and kind of explain the in and outs of how these batteries work. But the bottom line is this particular battery is a straight drop in replacement for the battery that your camper already has. So even though this Chin Smart Battery is a direct drop-in replacement for my old SLA, there are a few things I'm going to have to change slash upgrade to make it work. First off, on the tongue, I'm going to have to replace my battery box. This battery is a Group 27 size, so I got to up my box to a Group 27 box. I picked this one up at West Marine for $18.99, and it is perfect size for this Chin's 100 amp hour battery. The other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to replace our charger converter. It's this little box right here. This particular one from Progressive Dynamics I think was around $180. Bucks. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. Now this one is matched to the profile of this battery. So lithium ion batteries use a different charging profile than SLAs. And you also want to make sure that your amperage of your charger converter is compatible with your battery. You don't want to overcharge it and you don't want to get something under power that's going to take forever to charge it up. Now, if you're new to RV camping and you're not sure exactly what this charger converter does, it takes AC, alternating current power, from your shore tie that goes into your campsite or your generator if you got one, and it converts it to DC direct current. This goes through to your DC bus, and your DC bus you can tell is the one because it has a bunch of little blade fuses. Your AC bus is going to have breakers on it, much like your house does. Now besides converting that AC power into DC, so things like our LED lights and power awning can work, it also charges our battery. So that's why it's important that we want to make sure we have one specifically made for lithium ion batteries so we charge it properly and don't shred our battery. For our install, I'm going to start off by getting the battery mounted on the tongue first. I kind of played around with the idea of moving the battery into the back of the trailer, free up a little bit of weight on my tongue, get it out of the elements and away from where people can steal it. But in hindsight, I figured with the amount of work it would be to pull the cables back, but also still have power run up here for things like the tongue jack and the brake module and the way all the lights and stuff on this particular trailer are powered, I decided it would be easiest just to leave it on the tongue. And around here, I'm all about keeping it cheap and simple. Speaking of simple, to get better access to the batteries, I'm going to go ahead and pop these two propane tanks off. If you've never done this before, you just want to make sure that your valves are closed and your selector switch is in the 12 o'clock up position. That's going to kill the gas feed into the camper and so we don't lose whatever propane is in our lines. Then we're going to loosen up the wing nut type uh, fitting on top of the large threaded rod that holds down the bracket that clamps the propane tanks to the trailer's tongue. Once we get that off, they're just gonna lift right out.
just got the battery box and battery installed on the tongue of the camper. Quick safety tip, you wanna make sure that your battery is not hooked up when we're in there fiddling around with the AC bus or DC bus. So make sure you don't have a shore tie on, obviously a generator not running. I'm gonna leave the battery disconnected until we get that end all sorted out, and then we'll hook the battery back up. Another tip for you people that might be new to RV electrical systems, especially when compared to a DC system found on a car or a boat where red is positive and black is negative, the way that most RVs are wired up on the front where the battery is, the white is gonna be your negative and the black is gonna be your positive. All over the internet, there are tons of people that smoke batteries or, or shock the you know what out of themselves by hooking up the batteries wrong. So definitely pay attention to that. If anything else, just look what color comes off your positive pole and what color comes off your negative pole. Hook it back up the same way and you should be fine. The battery box is pretty easy to get off. It's just held on by two self-tapping sheet metal screws. One of my screws, the head was completely filled with battery acid, which is something we won't have to worry about with the lithium iron phosphate battery because it doesn't have any acid in it. It's completely sealed and non-toxic, so it won't be leaking all kinds of sit all over the place, rusting up the tongue of our trailer. I just went YOLO. I got one of the screws out, just snapped the freaking box off and took some vice grips to it and got the screw out. Also, when you're putting your box in, make sure that you thread the little seat belt looking nylon strap under the box. That's gonna hold your lid on. So you wanna make sure you get that in place before you go screwing the box in. That way you don't have to go back and take that off and put it back in. Learn from others' mistakes without doing it yourself. Another thing I had to do on my campers, I had to cut the cables where they were initially dressed. I guess you would call it dressed, but these were not dressed. These were pretty gnarly looking. We bought our camper at the height of the COVID pandemonium and they were just rushing to get trailers out. This is kind of just a pro tip for all of you guys that are shopping for trailers, particularly new trailers or a trailer from a dealership. You know, when you purchase a car, you look at the invoice and at the bottom of it, there's always that 500, 700, $1,000 ding for the dealer prep. Well, one thing a lot of these RV dealers are gonna do is they're gonna get you for a dealer prep. They're gonna charge you anywhere between 700 and $1,500 to do this. And what's included is a detail, even though it's new, you think it would come clean, but they're gonna get you for that. And they're also gonna get you for battery work which is installing a battery because the trailers don't come with batteries and installing and filling your tanks because trailers do not come with tanks from the factory. So if you're shopping around for trailers and you're new, definitely pay attention to that when you're shopping around and comparing prices. Also, that being said, a lot of this work is just crappy, sloppy work done by the dealer trying to get these trailers out the door. Between the time we purchased this trailer and we're actually able to pick it up, it was a whole month. So I know that they were just slapping these things together trying to get them out. So I'm gonna correct some of the cable routing issues up in the front here while I have everything unzip tied. Let's head on in and get this bus panel cover off and get inside to where the DC controller charger converter is located. So to get access to this, we're just gonna remove the panel cover. This is a wacko, very generic 30 amp package that you'll find in a lot of campers. Once we get that cover off, we can start identifying the three main components. On the bottom here, we got the charger converter. Up on the right hand side is our DC bus. You can see it's got blade fuses. And on the left, we have circuit breakers. That's for our AC bus, our 120 volt. Two screws on the ears of the charger converter, remove it. And then we can kind of see the, the wires that it's working with. On the left here, we got our ground, hot and neutral. And on the right, for the DC side, we got a red positive and a white ground. First thing we gotta do is get this old charger converter out of here. I pulled the hot, the black, out of its circuit breaker. It actually shared a line with another one and we'll see how we do that later. Remove the neutral wire from the common neutral and the ground from the common ground bar. For the DC side, just loosened up the two screws that secured the positive and negative. 
popped out the DC panel. It's like a little circuit breaker card, so be careful with it. You just push in the bottom tab, uh, swing it out, and then it should pull down from the top. My camper's got this nice little access hole too. Not really gonna have a lot of room to work, but it's enough to get to the backside. Eight more screws, remove the tray, the whole package right out of the cabinet. I kinda had to do this because the new charger converter was too fat to fit into the slot. So I'm gonna mount it back here you can see there's a common ground bar right there. I'm gonna take that up, move it forward a little bit, and then between that and that fender wheel well is where I'm gonna mount it. Had to pick up a couple things. Got two three foot sections here of six gauge stranded wire. And then I got an old receptacle. I actually had this at another place we lived and I used it to plug my TV in. That way you couldn't see the wires. But if you look here, I got a just a three prong plug on my charger converter. I didn't want to go cutting into the charger converter and all that stuff. So wired that up pretty easily. Just put the neutral right back into that common neutral bar that the original one was in and then made a little pigtail. Took a, a short section of the black wire, put it in the circuit breaker there and then made a joint with my receptacle and then that, that random other circuit that was tied in with the same breaker. Secured it with a wire nut, tucked it back in, got it out of the way. And that is it for the AC wiring side. For the DC side, we just secured our negative and our positive on the DC bus, snapped it back in, routed the wires out through the back of the power center, attached our positive and negative to the DC output side on the charger converter. And also I added a section of bare copper wire it goes to a little chassis strap that's on the side of the foot right there and that grounds out the whole case. I'm gonna meet that back up with my new receptacles ground and put it in the common ground bar. Now that the charger converter is installed in the power center of the camper, I'm not gonna hook the battery up quite yet. First, I'm gonna run the generator, get some AC power going in there, powering up the DC converter, and we'll see if some of our 12 voltage items like lights, the water pump, ventilation fans work. That'll let us know that, yes, the converter is working and sending power to our DC bus. If everything checks out with that, then we'll go ahead and hook up the battery and repeat the same test. Yo, make sure you subscribe. This is my generator. It's a Genrack IQ 3500. I freaking love this thing. It's actually a little past due for some maintenance. So coming up soon, I'm gonna be doing a video where I perform the 50 hour maintenance on this generator and just kind of give you my thoughts on how it's worked out for us so far. We've had it for about a year. This thing is pretty sweet. It'll run a whole day on just two and a half gallons of fuel. So make sure you check that out. Everything checked out fine. The converter is working, my lights are on. Everything that runs on the DC bus is receiving power. Next step, we're gonna hook up the battery and do the same thing. Make sure nothing blows up, nothing smokes. We're gonna see if we can get the Chin's battery app to work and see if we can get on to where we can monitor the parameters. Battery is hooked up. I went inside and checked my little control panel and the battery actually came with a full charge, which is super cool. I didn't want it to sit here all day with the generator running to get it charged up so I could have it for next time we haul on and hit the road. We're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna fire up the generator, just make sure nothing smokes or blows up. And then I'm gonna see if I can get this app going on the phone and see if we can monitor these parameters like they advertised it. Well, it doesn't look like anything's smoking or blowing up, so let's go check out inside.
Everything is looking good. I can even hear the charger converter's cooling fan running, which makes me think that the battery is indeed full. And this doesn't want to give it any juice because it doesn't need it. Everything is looking to be in good working order. I'm gonna go ahead, get on in there, and get that all buttoned up, get the wires tucked back. Definitely, before you go playing around in there, make sure that you disconnect your battery. I'm gonna take the negative terminal off. That way there's not hot voltage heading on back into that panel, and you touch it with a metal screw, and then just weld your screwdriver in there. Also, make sure that your generator is off, or you have your shore tide disconnected when doing anything in there with that panel. I am super excited now that this project is done and cannot wait for the next time we hit the road with our camper and don't have to worry about the tongue jack not working or the water pump not kicking on when we pull over to use the restroom on the road. This is seriously going to be like a major upgrade to our RVing experience because that weak Group 24 battery that this camper came with, it, it didn't work the whole time we've had the camper it's been completely unreliable so i am really glad to get this upgrade done i hope that you guys learned a little bit about the way that these things are wired and what goes on behind that mysterious panel it's really not that difficult but it's something that you do want to be careful if you're playing with whenever you mess with electricity make sure you de-energize kill all sources of current so that way there is no risk to you getting shocked. And then when you test out, bring everything back up very slowly, one breaker at a time. So that way you don't have any fires or any short circuits that you can't readily put out or diagnose. I did try to get the app downloaded so I could monitor the battery. I couldn't find the app by simply typing in chins on the Apple App Store. I went online and they say that just, you just connect it with the Bluetooth and I couldn't find it on the Bluetooth of my phone either. So I'm gonna have to make a follow up video exactly how to get onto the app to monitor the battery once I get that all sorted out. If you enjoyed this video and you like the content, you really feel like you learned something or took something away that you can use in your own projects, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed yet, please also do that. Hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a single video here. I got all kinds of just random little projects like this that I'm doing. The next thing I want to do with my camper is I'm going to hardwire in my generator so that way I don't have to bring the shore tie cable around the side when we pull over on the highway for a quick break. I got a really cheap and easy way of doing that. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Like always, thank you for tuning in and we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Hey, <laughs>